For whatever reason, Howard Schultz is back in the news again. He's appearing on a cable news program relatively frequently again, and this communicates to me that cable news, for whatever reason, is still taking him seriously. They're still treating him as if he's a serious political contender in the 2020 election, when I think he's demonstrated over and over again that he's a joke. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's not interested in the formulation of public policy. He doesn't even have any original policy ideas. He just is complaining about the prospect of his own taxes being raised, and he's complaining about things that he doesn't want to see happen. We know he doesn't like the Green New Deal. We know he doesn't like Medicare for All. But he hasn't proposed alternatives. He hasn't proposed alternatives. And if you're running for president, wouldn't you want to come up with a platform, things that you want to see happen yourself? And think about how much of a joke this guy is and why nobody should take him seriously. At a recent Fox News town hall, he literally suggested that he would put an empty chair in the room when he's negotiating in the event he becomes president, and that empty chair would represent the American people. I would bring the people into the room. I would say, you cannot come in here with ideology or ego. What I want to do is I want to put an empty chair in the room, and that chair represents the American people. <laughs> <laughs> Now, on top of that, when he was on Velshi and Rule recently on MSNBC, he was finally called out, and really, I think, Owen, but he was called out because he is, he's characterizing American political polarization and both parties supposedly moving to opposite ends when they're both moving to the right, mind you, and Republicans are getting more crazy. But nonetheless, he is trying to frame this as just an American problem. And the reason why there's so much instability in American government is because both parties are extreme. But what Ali Belshi did was he pointed out that what you're describing here is not unique to the United States. Bifurcation is happening everywhere because income and wealth inequality is a global problem. And when he was confronted, he melted down because he's a billionaire. How dare you confront him? How dare you not take this guy who's clearly clueless seriously? A lot of Americans knew this a long time before you really rich guys started talking about how bifurcated America is. And that's where we are today. So do you get why some people don't really think that you've yeah. got all the answers, that you rich guys who are, I don't know well, who told you that America's bifurcated. Yeah, I, Somebody I came know. to you and told you that there's a problem because well, I, I the rest of America's been living it. I you me a rich guy, but I grew up in federal, I, I, grew I understand, up in but now you're a really, really, really rich, really, really yeah, rich yeah, guy. Yeah, but I'm, <laughs> I'm self-made and I built a company that employed over three million people over the last 40 years and gave health care ownership and free college tuition to every employee. But you get when, yeah, when, when, get when you it. rich guys have, kind of get into the bifurcation yeah, conversation that the I'm rest not, of us have been having for decades. Yeah, but this is about a lack of leadership in a government of two sides, Democrats and Republicans, who are unwilling to face the issues and solve America's problem. Why do we have a 20, $22 trillion debt? Why do we have a health care crisis? Why do we have K-12 through that's not working? Why is our standing in the world not working? Because of both parties' ideology and unwilling to work together. That's why I'm considering running for president. So why is everybody to break the if system? If that's true, why is Britain bifurcated? Why is France bifurcated? Why is Germany bifurcated? Why were the Arab countries bifurcated? It's not actually about Democrats and Republicans. It's about rich people who don't pay taxes, who don't understand that it's not about charity. It's actually about wealth distribution. Right? Why, if that's wait, your explanation, why is wait, Britain bifurcated? I, I, wait, we we, now we're going to talk about what's going no, on. No, but you're telling me that I'm our bifurcation, about, economic bifurcation in America is because of Democrats and Republicans not agreeing on policies? I, why is Britain bifurcated? I'm talking about the lack of leadership and understanding of the fiscal responsibility of elected officials to do the right thing for the American so people. So in each, okay, case, that just, in each case that I just outlined... But that's because yes. that's not the answer in all those countries, and yet the world is well, bifurcated. I'm not, I'm not here talking about all these countries. But you're saying I'm that the reason about we're economically bifurcated is because of Republican and Democrat policies, and I'm telling you it's a global issue of wealth concentration, not actually about political disagreement on policies. Do you, you want to talk about each country? You want to put China up here? No, but I think to, we can cut this any you way know. you want, right? The, the, uh, how many You're rich wrong. people in America You're wrong. Could have the wealth of the bottom half of society? How many rich people in the world have the same wealth as the bottom three and a half billion in society? Oxfam says it's under 10. Listen, what, about 28? I didn't create the I policies that. that we are now under. So the guy's a moron. The guy's an absolute moron. And I've been using a lot of ad hominem attacks lately, so I'm, I'm going to try to rein it in just so you know. But, I mean, 
I genuinely believe that he is clueless. Like, I don't think he's intelligent. Because if you just listen to him talk, it's like, he, he doesn't know anything about politics. He doesn't know anything about politics. He reminds me of someone who read a book or watched one documentary and based his entire worldview off of that. But I mean, it's probably not even that complicated. It's just he saw that AOC was proposing a 70% marginal tax rate. He got offended and decided, you know what? I'm going to jump in the race myself and stop these new progressive politicians from raising my taxes. I, it's probably that simple, but I don't know. However, after basically assuming rightfully so, I think that he's clueless. Now there's a question in my head. Is he really clueless? Is he dumb? Or is he just being disingenuous? And the reason why I'm now questioning his intelligence and whether or not he um, is actually just actively lying or if he really is that clueless is because he put out a medium post about Bernie Sanders Medicare for all plan that is so bizarre if he really is that stupid, then I honestly feel bad for him. So this is what he says in a Medium post. Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All proposal would strip health insurance coverage from more than 180 million Americans and cost taxpayers more than $32 trillion to implement. That's actually not true. With no way to pay for it, no chance of getting bipartisan support in Congress, and the potential for significant ramifications in treatment and innovation, also not true, this proposal confirms what we already knew. Sanders and the far left wing of the Democratic Party are out of touch with reality. Being a leader requires making hard choices and being honest. Bernie Sanders' plan does neither and only serves to advance a far-left agenda. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Now, before we get to the substance here, if you can locate any of that here, I just got to show you that he tweeted out this article and it got ratioed to oblivion. And, um, you know, of course, I had to partake in that because if I have an opportunity that presents itself to me that allows me to dunk on Howard Schultz, I'm going to take it. Now, I love how with that last sentence there, he's basically implying that Bernie Sanders, he's not about being a true leader. He's just doing the bidding of big poor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it seems like he's saying. You know, he's standing up for big America, the American people lobby, who just wants their will implemented. I mean, what a joke. And he, again, like a CBS This Morning reporter I talked about recently on the program, he characterizes the expansion of healthcare to 100% of Americans, where it's free at the point of service, as stripping health insurance coverage. Do you not understand how stupid you sound, Howard? I mean... This is why I genuinely now am wondering, is he just dumb or is he being disingenuous? Because if you're the CEO of a company like Starbucks, you have to have at least a little bit of intelligence, right? So to say something this absurd, I mean, I can't help but question, is he really d this fucking stupid? I don't, I genuinely don't know. I'm still leaning more towards he's just dumb, but I think you also have to throw in a little bit of disingenuity as well, because to say something like this, to describe the expansion of healthcare as stripping away healthcare. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Dumb, disingenuous. I honestly want to hear what you guys say. So um, I will be reading the comments because I'm perplexed. The response and the um, objections to Medicare for All, they're getting so absurd that it's, it's comical. If I had to construct a parody, that's what it would look like. That's something I would say. Now, he also says that it would cost taxpayers $32 trillion to implement. Well, riddle me this, genius. First of all, how much does our current healthcare system cost over 10 years? It costs $60 trillion. How much would a Medicare for All system cost? Um, it would cost less than that. It would save Americans $2 trillion overall over 10 years. And that's according to a conservative, libertarian, Coke-funded study by the Mercatus Center. So there are other more accurate studies that demonstrate it would save us even more. 
So it's not going to cost us. What's costing us more now is paying that private monthly health insurance premium where when we see a doctor, we have to pay more for copays. We have to pay for our deductibles. And in some instances, we can't even get the care that we need. If we need a particular procedure, your health insurance company is at liberty to act as a death panel and deny you the coverage that your doctor says you need. How insane is that? So not only would Medicare for All be more efficient, it would reduce administrative costs, but it would save us money. So he clearly, I don't think he's read anything about Medicare for All. He just parrots the same idiotic line about that $32 trillion figure that he hears everyone else um, talking about. The $32 trillion figure, it speaks to the money that we have that's already swirling around in our health system. So the $32 trillion, what that signifies is that if you switch from private to Medicare for all, federal spending will increase, but at the same time, state and local spending, individual, private spending, it decreases. So that difference is the $32 trillion, but it doesn't speak to the overall cost of our healthcare system, which is um, $60 trillion. So this guy's an idiot. Or is he? Is he just disingenuous? I, I kind of feel like it's a combination of both, but at the same time, he's also clueless. <laughs> so Howard Schultz, I mean, he's someone that he would just go away if the mainstream media stopped interviewing him, stopped covering him. And I know that I'm part of the problem, but since he is coming on cable news programs and he's disseminating this misinformation, I feel as though I'm compelled to say that what he is talking about is factually incorrect. It's deceitful. So he's like Sarah Palin. Once the media stopped, um, he would be like Sarah Palin is my hopes. Once the media stopped focusing on her, she went away. If we do that with Howard Schultz, he would just go away. So either way, it doesn't look like he's going away anytime soon because I'm assuming he's a good ratings driver. So what the left needs to do is boycott Starbucks. And I'm not talking about these conservative-esque boycotts where you burn your Nikes. I'm talking about a real organized effort because this guy, if you hit him where it hurts, he'll understand that Americans mean business when we tell him to fuck off. And Starbucks rightfully tried to distance themselves from him, but he still holds majority shares. So if we boycott Starbucks, that still affects his wallet. It affects him personally. So that's something that I think we seriously need to consider, not some half-baked boycott. We need a real organized effort to boycott Starbucks. I know I've stopped going to Starbucks. I don't go there very frequently anyway because I think paying $5 for burnt coffee is just too much. But I think that we all need to, we need to really make some noise because he's not going away unless we take action. And boycotting Starbucks, I think, would be a really effective way at getting this dude to shut the fuck up once and for all. You could support the Humanist Report at Patreon dot com slash humanist report but trust me i'd have way more supporters on patreon if that was my podcast sad <laughs>